Hi guys, so this um, morning I ask you to um, to do a group uh, assignment that is to map the drug physical chemical properties or factors that will influence the delivery of drug to its target. Yeah, that is the pharmacodynamic uh, phase. Yeah, and map the factors to the label parts of the system. So these are the factors. And then I asked you to map it to, to the, the whole system. Yeah. Um, so let's have a look at each one of it. Yeah? So when a drug is taken in by a, pa by a, uh, by a patient, all right, um, there are at least five factors that would affect the um, uh, absorption of the drug. Yeah? So first would be, yeah, the, but the drug will be disintegrated. So it needs to dissolve. Yeah. So definitely the solubility is important. Log, the, log P and log D, especially log P, will come in, uh, in, in, in into, into consideration. pH, pKa, and also the drug stability as well. Remember that the um, pH of the, of the stomach is very, very strong. Yeah? In the stomach, in the stomach uh, um, a tablet or capsule will be liberated. So you do, that would be the first part. Yeah? And then... Um, there are three factors that would affect the um, uh, absorption of the the drug into the, the GIT into the into the blood yeah from the GIT. So the GIT enzymes, the gut wall enzymes, and also bacteria enzymes yeah. And then uh, the next one would be um, when you know from the GIT track. It, getting absorbed into the, um, uh, the system, uh, especially into the blood, uh, the plasma. Yeah. So in this case, uh, would be there um, at least, I think I put down there about 10 factors. Have a look on your answer sheet, whether all these factors are, you have listed, you have managed to work together and listed out all these factors. So log P, log D, PKA, PH, Ionization, molecular weight, solubility, permeability is important because the the drug needs to cross the um, the the cell membrane, yeah, cross in and out of cell membrane. The PSC is important, yeah, the polar surface area, drug stability, and the efflux influx of the drug, yeah, as well. Um, you you can have a look at the different the 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 way a drug can, can actually diffuse in and out. Remember, I mentioned earlier, passive diffusion, there are also other uh, types of um, transports involved in of, of drugs, yeah, and also uh, for, for the material. And uh, the phases involved in this stage would be the adsorption and also metabolism, all right, um, because of the, um, the enzymes involved. In this case, the, the first enzyme would be the hepatic uh, enzymes, all right? And then the second one I put it down here would be the enzymes in the plasma. So once the blood goes across into, from GIT into the um, the bloodstream, yeah, it will go to the liver. So you will actually see, you actually meet the liver enzymes. And then it will also meet with the enzyme in the plasma, yeah? So they could get um, decompose or metabolize as they go along, yeah? All right, the next one would be um, if a drug gets uh, excreted yeah, down, it could, um, the factors that could influence its, um, um, its delivery to the target would be also the log P, PKA, and also molecular weight. Yeah? Um, maybe also molecular weight, molecular weight may be not so much a big factor yeah, compared to PKA and uh, log P. Right. The next one would be once the drug is in, is in, is in the blood, yeah. Um, how? Uh, what are the factors that influence its um, its um, its delivery to a brain? If the drug is designed to be delivered to a brain, to the brain. Sorry. To the, so, if a drug is designed to be delivered to the brain. What would be the factors that you can uh, that would influence or you can actually use to to design 
uh, this drug yeah, or develop this drug further into something, um, uh, into a, a really good uh, drug for the brain, yeah, for Alzheimer, for example. Yeah. So the factors that one can take into account would be similar to the one in um, uh, log P, like the like one in the uh, the first one in absorption and metabolism. Yeah. So uh, except for probably, probably, probably thinking about transporters, because usually um, drugs go into the into the brain. The brain has this the BBB, uh, the blood brain barrier. So it is it, it is more difficult uh, for drugs to get. Across, it's not really any drug. Uh, log P also plays a big role, yeah, um, in in the um, in the in the uh, crossing of the uh, drug into the brain. Also, permeability is not listed there, but permeability is quite important for um, uh, a drug design to penetrate the brain. The drug gets distributed in this, the whole system, all right? And and then um, if, let's see, what's next then? Um, if they do get into, really to the target after crossing the, the liver and so on, probably at the target, there are two, perhaps two factors, which is the, as you know, is the, uh, the drug receptor or the drug tug interaction usually involve hydrogen bonding all right one divorce and so on and also whether it is stable at the at the target right some drugs interact with enzymes and the enzyme can probably catalyze the drug way faster than it can it will uh, catalyze its own substrate so there's a point of consideration um, about the drug stability in the with the target yeah? interaction with the target as well and the last but not least would be the factors involved in the hepatic cells so log p log d is um, are actually um, quite important factor as well yeah pka ph psa i put down here you can see is actually more than five yeah more than sorry more than four but of course yeah all the factors i actually ask you to do is at least you know I use the word at least, so that that gives you an idea that there, these factors should be considered, yeah, in this in the different uh, organ or different phases of the uh, let me. Yeah? Let's come back to the slide that um, I've talked about earlier. So the ability to deliver drug to the patient in a safe, efficacious, and cost-effective manner depends largely on the physical chemical properties of a compound in a solid state okay um, so if you take a drug all right um, and as a medicinal chemist one has to think about um, designing a drug in a in a sort of balance between uh, the hydrophilic part and also the lipophilic part okay and balance doesn't mean it's equally 50 50 it could be you know it could be like 30 70 it, can, it could be also be 40 60 depending on the target where the target is okay so um so what are the factors? What are the rules? Yeah, what are the principles involved in in determining all these uh, physical uh, chemical properties um, that affects a, a lead molecule? Um, you know, um, pharmacokinetics and also uh, bio oral bio uh, availability as well. All right. So there are actually four factors or four rules. Yeah, the first one is the, the Pinsky's rule, rules of five. Rules of five doesn't mean that it's just all five uh, things in there. But rules of five means it's, it's in a factor of five. Yeah, uh, I'll come to this. There's Weber's as well. Yeah, uh, polar surface area. These are the the parameters that you, uh, one needs one needs to consider, and also about drug solubility. All right. So Lipinski's rule of, uh, rules of five. Rules of five. Yeah. Um, so 
this the first one is about a molecular weight second one is about the hbd and then the hba and the last one will be the c log p c log p stands for calculated log p yeah so let's have a look so lipinski's predict that um if a drug has got a molecular weight less than 500 HBD equal or less than 5, so the sum of uh, hydroxyl group and also NH group. If the HBA has less than 10, that is the sum of oxygen and nitrogen. And the calculated log P is less than 5. Yeah. With all this combination, if, if a drug fulfills this, these rules of 5, they are most likely to be a promising uh, drug for um, oral administration. Okay, um, so let's just have a quick revisit. Yeah? So uh, we talk about oral administration, you know, going through the stomachs, uh, the stomach, and all going through the uh, GIT and so on. But I think the critical part would be the absorption, yeah, of a drug, which is a transport of of drug from the site of administration to the systemic circulation, yeah, by crossing the biological membranes. I would have would put an S in there. Yeah, it's the number of membranes that they're talking about. Yeah. So let's just have a look at um, a few drugs here. Um, so if you take aspirin and if you take amoxicillin, if you put in the molecular weight, the HBD, HBA and so on, they all fulfill the Lipinski's rule of five. So they are actually also given as an oral drug as well. Yeah? But then if you take um, uh, Silvestrol all right, and also Cyclosporine, okay? Silvestrol is a very potent compound. Yeah, very important compound. Cyclosporine is a very, very good drug. Okay. They fulfill everything. Um, they fulfill the Pinsky's rule of five, except for the molecular weight. These are huge molecules. The molecular weight is bigger than 500, uh, you know. So what happens here? All right. So there must be um, other explanation that, that could actually explain why... Um, this this molecule, this big molecule, um, become can actually f um, serve as a as a drug. Yeah. So let's have a look at um, so another scientist come in. So another scientist comes in and offer um, an uh, you know another explanation to this observation. So Weber, yeah showed that the oral bioavailability of drugs can be independent of the molecular weight. And what it depends on, it depends on whether the molecule is flexible. All right. um, it has number of confirmations. So if they are flexible and actually adopt a number of confirmations, Weber says there's the drug drug is less likely to be orally active. For example, so he, he actually proposed eh? so he actually proposed that a polar if you a drug has a polar surface area PSA equal less than 140 angstrom plus it has equal or less than 10 rotatable bonds yeah or it's got less, equal or less than 12 HBDs and HBAs in total, yeah? the total of HBD and HBA, plus less, equal or less, plus or equal or less than 10 rotatable bonds. So if they fulfill these um, uh, sort of rules by Weber, right? they can be orally active. Okay, let's just have a look at captopril for example here. This is a, you know, 3D structure of uh, captopril. If you see the, um, 
the surface volume, uh, surface view of uh, Captain Priel. Yeah, um, you know there are parts of it which is which you see the parts on the the oxygen here, nitrogen, oxygen as well as the sulfur. So these are sort of polar uh, parts of the molecule. Yeah. So the definition of of PSA, yeah, is um, the sum. So the, the overall, the sum of the surfaces belonging to all polar atoms. So this is a very good indication. Yeah, let's take a look in the, ne in the next slide. This is a very good uh, PSA is a very good uh, indication or parameters. Yeah, that we, uh, go, it, pro it provides a good correlation with the experimental transport data that is the, in other words you know the absorption the movement from a drug of a drug across the um, uh, across the membrane yeah uh, from the git and into the systemic circulation all right so psa looking at the values of P psa um, would give you an idea okay um, we give you an idea of the, um, uh, for example, intestinal intestinal absorption. All right. Um, for example, if you see down at the bottom, if a drug PSA is equal or less than one hundred forty angstrom, yeah, it'd be good at PSA predict, yeah, in a sense, good at it'd be good at permeating cell membranes. However, if the PSA is much lower. All right, ninety equal or less than ninety um, angstrom. If we, a drug, you know, can be thought as being good at crossing the BBB. Yeah, if you think about it, is the value of PSA is less than ninety equal or less than ninety, then it's usually uh, exhibit less polarity. Yeah, in cell, it's more is it is a less polar drug, therefore. It can easily uh, cross the BBB. Now, let's have a look at. Um, so we have had. Now um, we had a look at Lipinski's rules of five. We had a look at Weber's the PSA just now. So we're going to take a look at um, a drug solubility, which is uh, you mentioned yesterday that it is one of the main indicator, yeah, main parameter. Uh, that influence a drug to 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 get delivered to the target. Eh? So now, so let's have a look at the idea and some some definitions. Right. Let's see the here. So the aqueous definition of an organic compound is when a drug a drug candidate if you dissolve it in water, yeah. Um, upon breaking both, all right. The intramolecular and intermolecular bonds, therefore, allow water molecules to hydrate the solute to hydrate the drug. Yeah? let me show you, give you an an idea of what it what I mean by this. Yeah, by what I mean by this definition. This is a schematic diagram of if you have an organic liquid and you have uh, water. All right, what happens is that the um, there's a breakage. There's a you know the the, the 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 solute will separate, yeah, and then somehow they when they are mixed together, the water molecule will start to. Um, in here they is to use they use the word inserted, but I think it start to actually more or less around the solute, yeah, and um, that sort of like form. Uh, uh, here it, 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 is, it is explained in a way that it is actually form a cavity in the middle and water molecules surrounded it yeah if you look at a molecular level as well if you have a uh, example uh, a phenol group yeah you have benzene there's no way um, there are very little way of uh, water molecule interacting with the uh, benzene but if you actually add an OH group, uh, so benzene becomes a phenol, yeah, there's a potentially uh, three water molecules that can actually uh, they can actually um, interact, yeah, through hydrogen bonding with the OH group of the, the the phenol, yeah. 
so um, and and more if you have more functionalities you have uh, in addition to the OH group you have the hydrogen group you also have the carboxylic acid group as well there are there are more ways there are more water molecules that actually can surround and therefore hydrate the molecule okay so the, in, in general the more functionalities um, they are in a molecule the the more water molecules can actually hide uh, surround it and therefore hydrate the molecule so um, this is the basis of Lemke's um, uh, prediction yeah the he uses the word um, the when you have a functionality yeah it will it will impart a, a kind of water solubilizing potential yeah I think some of you actually have seen um, the table um, by Lemke's yeah um, between the mono functionality and also the poly functionality yeah in in um, in a drug molecule there's usually more than one functional functional group so when you have more than one functional group you tend to actually use the poly functionality the, cal the calculation for the poly functionality than the mono functionality yeah so um, Lemke uses the functional group to predict the water solubility of an organic compound. Yeah. Um, remember, I mentioned earlier, benzene. There's probably very little attention, uh, uh, very little potential uh, to to form for a water for water molecules to hydrate it. Yeah. There's there's no way to there's no way to to actually form an hydrogen bonding. But then, if you actually um, introduce, uh, uh, you know, a phenol group or another NH two group and so on, that will increase the water solubilizing potential um, uh, into the molecule or into a drug. All right. There's also the different ways. So in a drug discovery scenarios, there's also different ways of um, measuring solubility. So I'm going to just extend. Just now we had uh, a look at the definitions um, of say sorry uh, one definition of solubility. Then I showed you some pic uh, some uh, pictures, the schem schematic and also the um, the molecular molecular view. Just to give to to give you an uh, a better idea of what um, solub solubility means. Yeah. Uh, but now, in a drug discovery scenarios, there are um, three types of solubilities that uh, one could encounter, encounter. So one would be the apparent solubility. That means um, a scientist or medicine chemist will actually measure yeah, um, how a drug would dissolve in a solvent, for example, in water, right? Um, by incubating it over a period of 24 hours and then you start to measure it yeah with the intention this is important with the, with the intention that you will reach equilibrium within that period of 24 hours all right and then there's also the kinetic solubility yeah instead of waiting or taking the measurement of the um, uh, of the, the solution of the drug within in about 24 hours in kinetic solubility, it will take on, they will actually measure up to two hours. All right. So, and uh, how do you do it? Is that um, they will actually measure the concentration of the the compound in solution at the time when the first precipitate appears. So this is I think when they try to do the supersaturation of uh, of a particular. Um, uh, concentration of, of particular uh, you know uh, mixture all right um, if you see here the kinetic solubility is always somehow bigger than the intrinsic solubility intrinsic solubility is similar or is the same I would say not similar is intrinsic solubility is the um, equilibrium solubility 
Yeah. So um, I mentioned here as well. Just you, maybe you can just take a look um, uh, in detail on the um, of the table. Um, but I would actually men just mention here that kinetic solubility is usually way bigger than equilibrium or intrinsic solubility. All right. So depending on uh, the situation of the um, with blood risk curve scenarios, depending on which one, that will um, sort of um, okay. La last but not least, let me just leave you with this uh, quote. Yeah, in a new world, you know, we think about the big fish eating the small fish. It's not so much of that. Yeah, they're probably the, the old world, but in the new world, the world whereby we are actually going into the fourth industrial revolution. Um, we're talking about also machine learning, artificial intelligence, you know, uh, robots and so on. It's not so much a big fish versus the small fish. It's what matters more is the, the fast fish that is now the slow fish. Yeah. So let me quote unquote uh, Klaus Schwab. So with that, um, thank you. So I'll see you in class next week. Yeah? With that, thank you for watching. I'll see you in class next week.